Welcome everyone. Forgive me. I have a cold, so I might be coughing a little bit. I need some sips of lemon water as I'm speaking today. I'm very happy to be here with you. Thank you so much for having me this afternoon at this nice little workshop. Beautiful day here in Manhattan. So I'm going to talk to you about training. I'm going to talk to you about momentum. And number one, I'm going to talk to you about making money. It's something I'm very good at doing, something that I am very motivated to do. And as much as we all love trading, <laughs> just like it's fun to get up in the morning and look at charts, really you can't forget the goal. And the goal, of course, is to be profitable. So my name is Melissa Armo, and I own the Stock Swoosh. And again, welcome. So today I'm going to talk to you about a few things. If you have questions afterwards, you can email me at Melissa, thestockswoosh.com. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Skype. I appear on Fox News and Fox Business Network and CBS News. And I always put my hits on YouTube. If you ever want to know when I'm on television to catch me on TV, you can follow me as well on Twitter. So we're going to talk today again about making money. So momentum is something that comes in and creates a big move, whether it's in the market, whether it's in specific stocks, okay? That's something that I'm looking for each day. <clears throat> and I'm looking for one pick usually a day. It is possible to make this kind of money in the market. In fact, it's possible to make way more than this. But you have to start with where you are at right now. So again, I say it's like starting out when you're going up a ladder. First, you got to take one step to take two steps. You're not going to get to the top in one step. And again, this is common sense. And I think a lot of people that are trading and start this journey of trading forget how quickly you can get to this point once you get it, once everything clicks. Okay. So for me, everything started clicking when I started trading gaps. And that was very, very early on for me back in 2008. It's 2019 now. It's hard to believe it's almost 2020. It's six, less than six months. It's going to be 2020. Anyways, uh, I realized that you can make a lot of money playing momentum and gaps. I didn't know what it was doing at the time in 2018. That was, like I said, 11 years ago. <clears throat> but I knew there was something to this. And then I ended up creating and designing a strategy, which I utilize every day in the market, to find what is going to move and to find each stock that is going to have the momentous move because really that's all that you need in order to make the money because if you think about it you plop size on say 5,000 shares of a stock if you short it at 10 bucks and it drops down to nine what's your profit for a dollar move boom five grand okay so it is about capturing that move and capturing that momentum with the right pick at exactly the right time of day. And really, again, traders are very in their head about goals. You can break it down however you need to break it down for yourself to get it. In other words, conceptually, if, it, if you can't wrap your head around the per day amount, wrap your head around the per weekly goal the per monthly goal, per yearly goal. Like in other words, if $200,000 a year seems just crazy to you right now, and it, and it might if you're losing in the market, then take it day by day. Take it week by week. I call it chunking it out. You'll find that you can achieve your goals if you break it down in a, in a manner that you can wrap your brain around. And a lot of people that are losing trading have difficulty even believing that it's possible to make this kind of money because they're losing. Um, so again, you have to understand that it's possible and you've got to get on the right foot and get on the right path in order to get to that point. You may not be doing a strategy that works. You may not be reading charts correctly or you may not be reading charts at all. And I, for those of you that don't know me or haven't seen me on TV or places that I appear like Ameritrade, I, I train based on technicals, technical analysis. So I'm not looking at fundamentals at all. Now, while I may discuss that on television, it does not play a part or factor in my trading choices. For you, if you are an active trader and you like fundamentals and you like watching stuff like that and you like reading up, that's fine if it matches the technicals. However, if the technicals don't match the fundamentals, then what are you going to go with? And in my world, okay, the world that I've existed in for the last 11 years, the price action is what you can really, really helps you tells you where something's going to go. Again, so before we get into to some charts and things, I just want to set the tone here 
You can achieve these goals. You can surpass these goals. So my traders have had incredible years this year because I've had some very huge calls. Now, based on that, it has helped people to get in their head what is possible. In other words, sometimes we'll be in a position and an overnight option and it will gap into the move and have the momentum move overnight. That can occur. Sometimes a momentum move happens in the overnight position. Sometimes it happens during the day. It really doesn't matter whatever you're doing, whether you're doing a day trade equity trade where you have to be flat by four, or whether you're doing an overnight option or swing trade and you take it overnight, you're in it to get the momentum. So it's possible. So some days you may have trades that lose, but then you have other days that are big wins. And all in all, as long as you're progressing, that's all that matters, okay? So most of the days that you're trading, you really need to be green. And, and I caution people, if you are not green, if you are red, let's just say for the calendar year for 2019, then, or even if you were for 2018, <laughs> if you had a red year, you really gotta take a step back. There's a reason you're losing. A lot of people I talk to say, what's well, my discipline, it's my discipline. No, if you have a good strategy, even if your discipline sucked, you would make money just by default. It would be next to impossible for you to have horrible discipline, get in a trade at 10 and have it drop a dollar and knock it out somewhere with profit if you were short. So the fact is that it is critical, critical, critical to have a good strategy and most importantly, to get any position that you take in a stock or the market in the right direction. If you don't get in the right direction, it's gonna be impossible to make money, no matter how good your money management is. And I'm just realizing now that I didn't have the question thing open. Sorry about that here. Um, Shoot, shoot, shoot. Do you guys know how to make this bigger? Let me see if I can just open it up. I just realized that I missed all the questions here I just had. Sorry. Um, someone was saying about 20 years of trading. Yeah, I mean, whatever, whatever it takes. Everybody has a different learning curve. I will say, obviously, it would be easier if you come and learn my system from me. You would learn it in a weekend. Whatever your learning curve is, most, most people retain about 80% of the knowledge after the class. And so, you know, again, I make the learning curve shorter for you because you don't have to create your own system. Although that is a path, okay? It is a path for people to create their own system. It is a tough path though. And you have to have a lot of money and cash behind you. And not only that, you have to emotionally be very stable in order to withstand the ups and downs of creating your own system. And most people are not. They're distracted and they get down in the dumps and they don't persevere through the hard times when they come. I have a very strong personality, um, so I was able to do that. But also at the time that I created my system, I was I was single and I'm single now. So well, if you have kids or a family, all of those things can be distractions for you towards your goal. So even when you're trading, even if you're gonna trade from work or whatever you're doing, if you have a family, kids, pets, I said go into your office, shut the door, just block out one hour a day or the time that you're gonna be alone by yourself with the market because it's very important not to have any distractions. Turn your phone off, just turn your taxes off, everything so that you can focus on what you're doing. Because this is real live money, and even though you're on the computer, it seems like fun and it's moving, it can move in your direction quickly and it can move against you quickly. In other words, you could be up a lot and poof, then all the profit's gone. And that is momentum. Now the previous person was talking about volatility. I love volatility. The last two months have been volatile. Really, the beginning of the year was easy peasy. The end of the last year was volatile. Expect the rest of the year to be volatile. That makes for good, good, good trading, okay? You gotta know how to play it, but that's what makes for the money. And if you know what to do, you can capitalize on that, okay? So that's a positive thing. Volatility is a positive thing for me. Momentum is a positive thing for me, okay? You with me? And now I see the question, so I'll be able to scroll down. Sorry about that earlier. Um, anyways, if you can make this kind of money trading, six figures a year or more, whatever it happens to be, you can do it as a full-time job if you want. Now, again, I have run a live trading room. We shut it down in the morning about 10, 15, 10, 30. Maybe we're open till 11 if we're busy in a trade, but I only trade the morning. Now, if I'm in something overnight that's different, I'll watch what's happening later, but I'm not sitting at my desk all day. So, for example, <coughs> we might take a trade at 9.30, I mean, down at 9.35, and that's it, okay? So even if this is your full-time job, it doesn't mean you're sitting at your desk from 9.30 to 4 market hours. And in fact, I think once you book the money and you're done, you should walk away. You wanna make sure that you keep your profits in your day trades when you're taking them. 
So the nice thing about trading, again, if for a career, this is what you want. You can do it from home. And not only that, you could do it from anywhere in the world. So you do not have to live, like I live in New York, you don't have to go down to Wall Street. In fact, if you've ever been to Wall Street, if you've ever been to the stock exchange, it's very, very small. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny area. Um, so you don't have to work down there. Most people do not. And many big traders actually have their offices in Midtown, Midtown Manhattan. So, you know, you can be anywhere in the world and do this. You have to have a trading account and you have to have a computer and you have to have a live internet connection, obviously, to get price data. But the one nice thing, again, going back to the price data versus fundamentals is that if you pull up a chart and I pull up a chart, guess what? We're going to get the same price. I mean, within seconds, within milliseconds, the market and electronic market that we live in today happens. So we all see the same price you know, at virtually almost the same time. And so that is positive for us. That we know. That information we're all getting electronically and very, very quickly, okay, which is, makes it exciting to trade in this types of environment, okay, 2019. Anyways, it only takes a few hours a week to trade and make money. It does require focus, okay? So I'm going to talk to you today about my strategy and about some trades. And you can think about this with what you're doing. But one of the main reasons for my personal success and the success of the people that I've taught what I do is the fact that I'm very, very specific about what I do and I'm very, very focused. And this focus helps me to do everything right. And although I strive for perfection, it some days obviously I take trades that lose, but the fact that I strive for perfection constantly helps me to be consistent and helps me to, to win, okay? And again, going back to the title of the webinar, going back to what I was saying earlier, I'm highly, highly motivated to make money. Now, many people I find that I've talked to throughout the years, and again, I've had the business for seven years, talked to a lot of people. Some people are, you know, yeah, about trading. They're kind of there, but they're not there. They're like half-assing it. If that's your mindset about trading, don't expect to be successful. In fact, expect to have a red year, expect to lose overall, expect to be, you know, writing off your losses when you do your returns at the end of the year. You can't half-ass this. Now, this doesn't mean that this has to take up seven days a week of your time, 24 hours a day, but it means you're full on focus and full on concentration when you're putting money at risk and you can't forget that it is your hard-earned cash that you're risking when you take a trade. So if you risk $500, that's your 500 bucks. You wanna turn that 500 bucks into good use, okay? Otherwise, just go have fun, go out to a nice dinner or go, you know, go gambling or whatever. So trading isn't gambling. Trading, when I look at it, it is a specific thing that I sit down to do every day and the setup that I'm looking for is either there or it's not. It's just like that, okay? It either meets the criteria or it does not. So again, focusing on momentum. Here's a good example here. Um, this was a chart back from, uh, oops, this is Adobe, it's the same chart here. This is a chart back from June. Now, I was talking to you about the fact that I do gaps. I'm gonna explain to you here what a gap is. Stock closed here, this was Adobe, boom, gap up. So this was on the earnings. Stock closed here the night before, around 277 and change. Boom, open in the morning around 287.50. So the stock closed here, gapped up. So what is a gap? <laughs> a gap is a difference between the close and the open. US stock market opens at four o'clock, I mean closes at four o'clock, opens on the next day at 9.30. Between this period, at night, after four, and in the morning before 9.30, there are trades that occur. And I'm looking to see what happens in that post-market period and the pre-market period. And what I do is I read that period and I read that data and then I determine the direction that the stock is gonna make on the live day. We only trade it on the day, which would be after 9.30. But the point is that I'm looking for what happens between here and here, and this is a gap. So in the case of Adobe, this was a gap up. Now getting back to momentum, this is the momentum. The stock within two days, one, two, went from 287.50, boom, ran up over 300. So that's a big move, even for this stock, okay? 13 points plus in a matter of two days, boom, boom. And for the previous day down here, you can see it was at 277.50. So you could have day traded this, 
long. You could have day traded this here long. You could have bought it as an option, whatever. It was a nice move. It was a positive move. You would have bought calls in it, okay? So I called calls on this in the options letter, but you also could have day traded it, all right? Little expensive to do that. You have to have the margin if you day trade. The benefit of trading with an options account is your minimum requirement is only $2,000 and you don't have to worry about margin. But either way, same concept, same philosophy, which is you are trading the momentum and the follow through, boom, higher, okay? Nice move, this was back in Adobe. Uh, gosh, this is like a moment, almost a month ago now. Anyways, again, it's the key of making money. It's very simple. If I went out to talk to a bum on the street, the bum on the street would know that if you bought Adobe at 287 and sold it at 300, you would make money, okay? That does not take genius. What takes the genius and the genius in my system is that I know and can predict and see that Adobe is going to move higher and therefore to go long it. Again, whether in the form of an option or a day trade, it does not matter. But again, once the momentum is in, you want to be out after that. The genius is in predicting that the momentum was going to come in and scoop it, scoop it up and go higher or push it down if you're short, okay? Because you want to play that move. After the move, there's nothing to do. You don't want to take it after the move. You want to take it with it, okay? That's what gives you the lift. <laughs> and the whole purpose behind what I do is I'm looking for institutional money so that institutional money buys stocks and moves them higher and institutional money shorts or sells stocks that pushes them lower. Okay, makes sense? Any questions here so far? I see there's any other questions. Uh, what do you mean a 24-hour global chart? The U.S. stock market is not open 24 hours a day. It has a post-market and a pre-market. This isn't Forex. And by the way, Forex only has one gap a week. So I don't know what you mean by 24-hour market. The U.S. stock market is not a 24-hour market. Um, what about a put? Let me just see. So it's the same thing when a stock gap's down, yes, but it has to rate, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. When a stock, if you're gonna short the stock, you could short as an equity trade, we're gonna talk about some shorts, or you buy the put if you want it to, if you're, if you're predicting the move down. Dray trading pattern rules. The $2,000 account is for options, whoever asked that question. So options trades do not require margin, and we are gonna talk about an option trade in a minute. So an option trade, you could take it on a Monday, you could exit it on a Wednesday. You don't have to have a margin account to do options. And that is something if you've never heard of it or don't know anything about, then call, call any broker at all and they'll explain that to you. And you pay the cost of whatever the contract is. If the contract costs a dollar, then you're gonna pay $1. Does that make sense? Anyways, we are going to talk about both day trades and options here, which I can get into a little bit, and we'll talk about some shorts. <laughs> I think I got everything so far. One individual can trade the market successfully as a career with a dependable method. So because I've been doing this a long time, I have a lot of conviction, high conviction in my method, which allows me actually also to talk on television. I wouldn't be able to talk on television unless I had conviction in what I do, all right? So in order to reap the rewards that the market has to offer, you need to have a quality system to follow. This gets back to what I was saying earlier. Do not blame yourself if you're losing. I hear the pity party talking to people all the time. I talked to a gentleman the other day in a terrible 2018, and I'm telling you, don't pity party yourself anymore. At a certain point, you have to just dust your feet and get up and stand up and walk away and say, I'm doing something, and I'm not going to do it anymore because it doesn't work. It's not you, it's the system. It's not you, it's the system, okay? The central structure to trading results must be a strategy with a solid foundation that's based on accurately rating price action. The other powerful factor in being consistently profitable is having an edge. I definitely have an edge. And one of the reasons I have an edge is because gaps are very, very misunderstood. It's the best way that I can describe it. Most people don't understand what a gap is. Then there's a bunch of people that do know what gaps are and they have absolutely no idea how to read them. And then there's people that know what gaps are and read them incorrectly. So very, very, very few people know how to read a gap accurately. 
And that's just a fact. And I think it will always be that way because for some reason people are scared of gaps. They're scared of them. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't, I don't have any idea why, but they are. And in 11 years of doing this, it's been the case. And I think if I fast forward 10 years from now, if I'm still doing this, if I'm still teaching, if I'm still running the business, if I'm still trading, doing everything I'm doing now, I think it will be the same. So this is my edge. Plus, I have a have a huge head start on everybody because I've been doing this for so long. But also, I think shorting gives traders an edge. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people like to go long. And while the market is in a bullish uptrend, that is true. Tr things, stocks tend not to stay in their same trend forever or the market. Many traders don't know how to focus on one strategy or won't. They're always in that FOMO mode, fear of missing out. But it's actually the opposite. Sure, you've heard of that before. Oh my God, I have to do this one. If I don't do this one now, I have to do this one. Nope, that didn't work. I have to do this one. Oh, I lost in that. I got to do this one. Let me do that one. Boom, boom, boom. And all of a sudden, you've got 10 trades you did on the day. You're down. <laughs> your, your commissions are insane. And you lose. Okay. You're not missing out on anything. In fact, today I called no new trades. No new options trades today. Closed out one, which we'll talk about here. And no new day trades. There was no fear of missing out on anything today. Fed meeting is happening Wednesday and Thursday. Some good earnings start reporting Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Earnings season doesn't officially start until next Tuesday. There's no reason to do anything at all today unless you were closing out positions that you were ready in and up. There was nothing to do. There was nothing. You could say, I love this thing. Risk the farm. There wasn't anything like that today. Okay. Um, gosh, I think it locks the questions here now again. Uh, let me just say, stocks and options. Yes, this is only stocks and options. Um, somebody's talking about day trading rules. I, if you're talking about number of trades that you can take, if you're in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out of options, like 10 options trades a day, that's considered a margin account. I mean, it depends how active you are. But I, when I call the options trades, I'm not calling like five trades a day that go and that you'd be in and out in five a day. Now, while theoretically you could do that, you wouldn't in the trades I'm calling. So I'm just talking here today about how I'm calling my trades here, which I'm going to show you. Okay. If you, you can day trade options, yes, that's true. But that's now how, how I call them. Every once in a while, there might be one that you would take in a day and get out, and then that would count as two as two uh, transactions for that week. But you would never have multiple, multiple ones like that every day with me as the options. You follow me? Like, for example, Adobe, you could have taken one day and got out the first day, or you could have taken it the first day and got out the second day, whoever, whoever asked about that. Again, I'm not a broker. You have to talk to your broker about it, but you absolutely can trade options without a margin account. And if you don't have 25,000, it is absolutely something that you should look into. Um, or you can look into a prop account. Proprietary day trading accounts allow you to be actively in and out in day trades with a minimum requirement of 2,500. And there's tons of proprietary day trading accounts out there as well. And it's getting back to what I was saying, momentum happens fast, it happens quick. So you've got to be an expert, see what you see, see the momentum coming in and take it and take it without hesitation. So my point rating system helps me to take it without hesitation. This gives me the confirmation that it's good to take the risk, to put the trade on, to take it and do it. OK, again, the philosophy is behind it is one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, ideally two, big moves on the day. Again, ideally. Three, early confirmation of my bias in the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. That's when we're looking to do the day trades and precise entries with follow through with a good risk to reward. So the options trades, I say 50% to 100% return investment. You're looking for most of the trades. Some can be more. I wouldn't get out unless you're just desperate to get out if it's under 50%. And as far as the uh, day trades, we're looking for one to one. <laughs> but I'm looking for large institutional money moving the stock. Here's Baidu. This was back from May. Really nice gap here in Baidu. Played this every which way but up. Uh, closed here, gapped down, dropped. Closed here, gapped down, fell. Boom, boom, boom. So you see here what the Baidu was up here around 150 and change. Then gapped down here 130, fell off a planet. 
I forget what the low in here was, but it broke 110. So this was a gorgeous move in the buy do. Again, day trade or a put. Um, I do both. Sometimes I'll call something right near the strike or at the strike. Sometimes I'll call something away from it. I'm looking at the cost of it. Looking at the cost of it. The cost has to be what I think is reasonable and also what I think the momentum move is going to be. Do I think the momentum move is going to make it? But you can make money in an option trade as long as it's moving, moving to the price. It doesn't even have to get through the strike for you to make money. Obviously, if it gets to the strike and through the strike, you're, you make more. Okay, the bigger the move, the more that you make. So anyways, this was a nice short move in Baidu. This was the golden gap of the month of June. I didn't even put this whole chart on here, but this was BYND. This was a bullish move up. Again, this chart doesn't have a lot of data. Talking about chart analysis, I had very little data on this, but I saw it. I saw it was happening. I called this trade very, very, very late on a Friday into the move on a Friday, no less. And then it went crazy birds on Monday. So this is a seven, this is a Friday. Again, you could have done it as an option. You could have done it, got out. You could have done it and held it. This went, this was absolutely ridiculous. I called, I think it was 11 trades in this in the month of June. It, literally every trade I called in this worked but one. This was the golden gap of the month for, for, for everybody. <laughs> this is beyond me. And I don't know if anybody's looked at this chart, but this is one that, is really fun to trade because you can just, I mean, you get this sucker in the right direction. You are up like a lot of money really quickly. I mean, I have, I can't even remember the last time I've seen something move like this. I mean, talk about volatility. This is like, woo. I mean, you got to pay attention when you're in this trade, when you're in the stock, um, but it is really fun to trade. Um, something about gaps here. Hold on. Um, how many contracts on an average per day? Again, we're talking about two separate things equity trades and options trades. I don't do an options trade every day. I try to do a day trade every day if we get it. If I do a, if I do an options trade, the amount that you risk in dollars and cents is what has to be similar in every trade, not the contracts. What if something costs $10? You can't take the same amount every trade because something may cost 10, something may cost one. It's the dollars and change amount. And again, that has to have to do with the exact amount that you have in your account that you can afford. You cannot take a $2,000 risk if you have $2,000 in your account. That wouldn't make any sense at all. So it has to go according to your size account. And it's not the same contracts. It's the same monetary risk. Why don't I call the gap trade before it gaps? Because I don't know where it's going to gap. Every once in a while, we're in something and it gaps. We're already in it, like this BYND, and then it gaps again. But how did I know? I don't know where this is going to go. This had earnings. How did I know this was going to go here? Could have gone down. That's like a crap shoot. That's like going to Atlantic City. You don't know where something's going to gap until it gaps. I can't say what's going to happen in the earnings. It's like saying, well, tell me exactly who's going to get elected president in 2020. Well, I mean, you know, you could say, well, high odds, Trump's going to get reelected. But does anybody know? No, because everybody thought Hillary was going to get elected. and She didn't. So you know what I'm saying? I don't call trades that way. I may look at something, I may have, you know, an intuition, a sixth sense, but you don't trade on intuition, you don't trade on sixth sense, you trade based on a strategy and a system, and that's what I do. So let's talk about what's important, accuracy counts, quality strategy, good risk to reward, right entry, correct size, someone was asking about contracts, the size means the dollars and cents, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, not the same contract size, proper exit, which means get out when you're up. Being successful in the market takes detail and a certain level of precision. Detail matters. It can make a difference in you're making a lot of money one day or losing. So you have to learn what to do and not only that, what to do. And it's about having a trained eye. So my eye is very trained. To see trades like that, BYND, Disney, BA, which I'm going to talk about here today, which I've talked about in several other webinars. It's, it's a trained, trained eye. Oh, Facebook here. This was another good one. Facebook fell here. This was a put. It's off a planet. People were long in here. We went short it, it went poop. And again, this was a quick one, you're in a day or out, but this was a beautiful call. Again, we captured this short move in the Facebook. So you gotta focus on where the momentum is. And we're gonna talk about a day trade here. Um, somebody's talking about something. I don't know anything about any other people and I don't follow any other people and I don't care about any other people, sorry to tell you. <laughs> Sorry, I do only what I do. I live in my own world here in the heart of Manhattan. 
and it works for me. And if you come and want a trial to the trading room, I'm doing an open house this week, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You can email me if you want a trial. But uh, me living in my own world works. It works for me. It works for calling the trades live in the room. You can have other distractions. And when I was trying to look for a system to do back, you know, 11 years ago, everything that I found about gaps, I realized didn't work. And there was very little out there. And what was out there was crap. So that's why I ended up having to devise my own system. I'm very happy I did. I didn't really plan to be teaching people, but you know, here I am. Anyways, getting back to this, this was CCL. This was June. <clears throat> Closed here, gap down, open, dropped. Boom, we got it. Again, this was a day trade here in that taily thing, and we got it. So here's what it did. Open, short it, get the drop. Again, this is an equity trade. Stock closed up here the night before, gap down, boom. We're in, out. See here at the time of the day. Stock opens here at 9.30, gaps down in here, falls, drops into 9.40. 10 minutes out, done. So entry for this, this is a day trade. 46.90, 4,000 shares, risk 2,400, exit 46.15. Nice move. Not quite a buck, but close enough. Good profit. Good profit in here. And again, usually looking for one-to-one. -one. Here it is again. Boom, boom. Okay. And literally, this is how fast we do it. And if you come to the day trade open house, you'll see. I mean, this is what we do for the day trades. Okay. Anyways, the time of the day has a lot to do with it. Because again, I'm looking for institutional money. And I want to see what they're going to do. I want to go with that, that momentum. It has to do with precision and focus. So I rate the gap in the daily chart. That's my system. But then I'm looking for the setup on the one-minute chart where I take the entries. And I do call the exact entries and stops and exits in the live trading room. So if you want to learn my system, you can join the live room. You can't join the live room without learning my system. But again, you can come this week for a trial. Here was another nice put or, or, or a short. <laughs> again, you could have done this either way. But it, I do think it has to do with how you feel comfortable with the amount of money you have in your account. Closed here, gapped down. Take it over. It's around 28 something. Opened in the next day here around 27 and change. Boom, get the drop. So here again, you see the momentum. Fell off a planet. Loan here is around 25. This is a big move for this stock. Two bucks. Now this stock can rock and roll too. You see some of these bars over here, but again, this was a short. So here was the CAG. This was 627. It was the week before the July 4th holiday. Boom, short it, get the drop. You'd still be in it, get the drop. There's no bad exit here, okay? You take it, you're up. You take it, you're up, okay? So this is a beautiful move again into the first half an hour of the day. I call this the money move. Again, this is momentum, where as soon as you take the trade, you're up money. And that's the way I like to play it. Entry 2688, stops 2765, shares 3000, exit, boom, into the drop, 27, uh, 2617, profit 2130. Uh, someone's asking here about the UK. Uh, just email me at melissa at the stockswish.com, M E L I S S A at the stockswish.com, or info at the stockswish.com for the trial. The fact that you're in the UK has nothing to do with anything. You can still be in the trial. <laughs> so I predicted CAG. I predicted CCL. I predicted BA, which we're going to talk about using what? My checklist, the rating system. Boom, boom, boom. This is the meat and potatoes of what I teach in the class. Okay. This is how I do everything. This is how I call the market. Okay. So all of this helps me predict not the gap itself. No one can predict the gap itself. I predict what's going to happen after the gap has occurred so that we know how to trade it or if to trade it at all. Because some gaps are nothing gaps. And by the way, not every gap down can be shorted and not every gap up can be going long. That's another misnomer that people have as well. So that's what the rating system tells me. <laughs> it tells me do it or don't do it. Take it or lay off, okay? Sometimes I'll rate something and it doesn't rate well. Someone's asking, do I short stocks or buy puts? I do both. I do both. Not in every train, but I do both. Something like Amazon, we would be doing the option. 
I'm not day trading the stock Amazon based on the price point. I could, but it just doesn't make any sense. Okay. So it really depends on the stock itself, but it's a three step process. <laughs> and again, it's like your financial goals. Break it down, break it down for yourself so you can, so you can get a handle on it. So I rate the gap in the morning, you can do it at night, but I rate the gap predicting the correct direction of bias after I see the gap occur. That's one. Two, I take the trade as an option or an equity trade after 9.30, okay? Not trading in the after hours, and you can't trade options in the after hours. And three, I'm booking the money into the momentum move, and that's it, okay? And the trades that lose, lose. So I have about an 80% win ratio on both the options and the day trades. So you figure every 10 trains, two will lose and eight will win. Okay. And that is also why I use stops. Now, this was a nice call. <laughs> I called the BA puts back on the 27th. We're going to look at this. 362.50. Was it, this, is, this is still, you could still be in this. 712.19. So I thought this was a nice move in this today because I did the ad. Although some people already got out of it, this was a nice call. So here's the 27th, called it, stock closed here, gap down, fell. Again, you could have day traded this. Then it had to move here. I think a lot of people were out of this here and then it kept going. Here we are. I mean, the 12th is not till Friday. Do you see here? This is where I called the train. I forget what time I called it. Called it about 15 minutes into the open. Okay. So anyways, cost was 550 on the initial day. 12 contracts risk was 6,600. This is an advanced risk. You do not have to risk this much. You risk what you can afford. If you can only afford 550 bucks, you're buying one contract. Someone asked about contracts. It's about the cost. If you risk 500 every trade, that's what it is. And if, if a trade is, costs 1,000, guess what? You're not doing it then. You can't take a half. So it's, then you don't do that one. And sometimes I do call ones that could be pricey. Not always, but sometimes, like the Googles and the Amazons can be up there. Then we did an ad. <coughs> I forget the data. It was, it was this first. I sent an email, boom, you can take more of this puppy if you're still in it. Again, some people have gotten out. Ad was higher price. Doubled up on this one. I liked it. Average price, then it ranged the average price, 625 Exit, beautiful exit in this. This ended up, I don't even know where the high of this was today, but I know it went over 13. But again, I, this still has movement in it and time left. Huge profit here, 15,720. Now this was, again, since the 27th here. I'm gonna go back here on this day and you see the follow through. Uh, let me see, some people are asking questions. Um, I only do, I rate the gap, and I rate gap downs, and I rate bullish gap ups. So either it rates to go long as a bullish gap up, or it rates to short as a bearish gap down. That's it. If I rate something that gaps down, that rates badly, I don't flip it around and go long it. I just won't do it as a short. Does that make sense? I have a 26-point rating system. It has to rate 20 points or more per the system. That's the checklist. If it rates 16, I'm not doing it. If it rates 17, I'm not doing it. And I'm not flipping it and taking it in the other direction. Makes sense? So this gap rated well, and it had the follow through. This was a big move here, but it's continually going down. I don't know what you mean, at eight out of 10. Oh, you mean the win ratio. I thought you were talking about the points. This was 26 points. You gotta get 20 of the 26. So anyways, this is what the system is. It's a system I created myself. It took me three years to create it, and I've been doing it for a long time. I don't do anything else. I don't even think about doing anything else. As far as I'm concerned, I live in my own world, as I said before, and if I make a mistake, then I own it. Um, I don't make that many mistakes, though. I'll tell you that. So I'm very very focused and part of that is again my drive passion and desire to be profitable 
So, you know, when I first started out trading, I'll give you a little backstory here. I don't want to take up too much time because I do want to go over some things here at the end, but I wanted to change careers. I was doing mortgages for a long time and the mortgage industry collapsed in 2007, 2008 and I wanted a new career. And I wanted a career that had unlimited income potential. And that was hard to supplement back then because again, continuing to do mortgages, it became increasingly difficult then to get banks to approve loans. While I was still doing them <laughs> and I was still making money at the bank, I realized that it just was too much work to even get one loan approved. Nowadays, I have no idea what it's like in the mortgage industry. I'm, I'm guessing it's the same or worse. But regardless, I was very fixated on the on doing something that I could have unlimited income potential. I didn't want to be capped at a set salary a year. I wanted to have room for growth. And so when you're doing a career, if you don't see any room or potential for growth for your salary, okay, what happens is it, it, it you say, well, why am I going to have to do this every day? Well, I guess if you absolutely love what you do, say you're a musician or you're an artist and you just do it because you love it, and you don't care what you make, well, then that's fine. I'm not, that's not me, that's not my personality. So again, everyone is motivated by different things, but I'm highly motivated by money. And I find that a lot of people are, they just don't know how to tap into that. And more importantly, they're like afraid to even just admit that they are. If you can come to terms with the fact that you are highly motivated to make money, you will be more focused. You will step outside and stop looking at trading as gambling and you will stop losing if you are and you will take a different mindset to doing this, which is one learning, learning what to do before risking six thousand dollars in a trade or more. And you will you will get the concept of it. A lot of people jump around to webinars and open houses and trading rooms and webinars for years and years and years. And they're just not serious. Well, they're not really that motivated by money then, because if you were motivated by money, you'd throw yourself into it and you would learn it and you would do it and you would you would go step by step. You know, you would take the necessary steps and it doesn't have to take that long to get there. But I mean, <laughs> if you're not even on the right path, I mean, how the heck are you ever going to get there? There's too many people that want to make money in the market. It's impossible that everyone can win. The very essence of the market is that when you take money, now just listen to this for a second. If you went in a trade, I'm going to go back to BA. If you were long the stock in this move, all the shorts took money from the longs. You're taking money from other people. Nobody's making anything. Somebody didn't make a widget. You didn't buy a blender here. You, if you shorted the stock, I don't care how you did it, you made money from this day to this to today. You took money from some other human being that exists on this planet Earth, and they lost and you won. Do you understand? That is what trading is. So it's a skill set. So who wins? The people that are the smartest, okay? The people that are the smartest and the people that are focused. With a $25,000 account, can you consistently make 500 a day? First of all, if you know anything about having a retail account, if you go one penny under 25,000, if you have 24,000, one penny under, then you're gonna have to refund it. So you shouldn't just have 25,000, just, just so you know. You should have over 25,000 so you can continue to trade. You understand? If you go one penny under, you're not gonna be able to trade the next day, just FYI. So I would have 25,000 more, more than 25,000 in a retail account. And if you don't, then you should go to a proprietary day trading account where you can open up an account with 2,500. Do you understand? Um, anyways, a $500 risk on a $25,000 account thereabouts makes sense. That's fine. I think that that makes total sense. I don't think that's too high. I don't think that's too low. But know that you need to have more than 25,000 to be active. Because if you go one penny under, then you you won't be able to trade the next day. So you need a cushion. Okay. Whether that cushion is 26,000 or 30,000, that's up to you. Anyways, people always ask me how many gaps per week. During quarterly earnings season, which we start next week, which is very exciting, we usually have three to five, you know, or more. Now, um, that's per day. In earning, non earnings season, it's three to five a week. So a lot different. Now, sometimes we will do the more than one a day if it's busy and there's a couple good ones, but I do like to focus on one a day. 
Uh, Melissa, um, <coughs> sorry to cut you off, but uh, our next presenter is here. And oh, I didn't even know I only had till one. I thought I had yeah. an hour. Oh, that's my fault. Uh, Let me just put my contact information up really quick. Okay. Sorry, you guys. Listen, if you're interested in my class, I'll just let you know it's July 20th and 21st, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Cost of the class is $59.99. I'm doing a Christmas in July offer if you sign up by July 19th. Um, and again, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. I'm offering the options letter and trading room free to the end of the calendar year with the class in July. It's July 20th and 21st in two weeks. Sorry about that. I thought I had an hour to talk. That's fine. <laughs> Listen, have a great day, everyone.